Hi, this is Markets Today and I'm Datha Venkatesh with me is Sonia Shanoi. Well, today the markets uh, had a down day. After hemming and hoeing for a better part of this week, uh, we did see the last day kind of give up some gains across the board. It wasn't a whole lot and it was perhaps forgivable. It is the usual Friday factor. You want to take home some gains. And ahead of uh, the big payroll number from the United States, perhaps it was well-advised caution. Hi, Sonia. Hi, Lata. Yes, uh, a bit of profit taking is what we saw. Uh, for the entire week, the index closes in the red and for the day as well, the index closed in the red. So about half a percent gone this week. Uh, and even for the day, the mid cap index saw a degree of underperformance. But here are all the top headlines that we're tracking on markets today. After a day of consolidation for the markets, the key indices lost a bit of ground in the final hour with the Nifty trading below 85.50. The mid cap index, which was mildly outperforming through the session, ended half a percent lower. Important stock action, SBI cuts interest rates of three retail term deposits by 25 basis points. The management told CNBC TV 18 that uh, they expect a positive impact on margins. Liquidity in the system is adequate and that uh, base rates could be cut in calendar uh, 15. And the government kick-started its divestment program with a 5% stake sale in Steel Authority of India via the UFS route. According to NSC, the issue has now been fully subscribed. And here are the experts that we have lined up on the show for you today. Ajay Shivaswa of Dimension Consulting will join in to talk about the road ahead for the markets. And Gautam Chaucharya and Nirmal Jain will also join in to give their market perspective and their top sectoral picks. All right, and straight to the day's trading action then. The markets reversed most of the day's gains in the last hour of trade to end the day at its lowest point. Anuj is here to give us the market wrap. Anuj. Well, clearly the market ended at days low, but then you'll, you'll have to give a slight bit of benefit of doubt to the bulls because it was Friday. And you, know, you had uh, uh, the, the mid-cap index gaining or outperforming 4% for the week. So it was always expected that there would be some profit booking. However, there are signs that the mid-cap index might be topping out and there could be correction which could be around the corner. Is today the start of that? That's something that we'll come to know on Monday. But as of now, this remains a bit of profit booking move. Let's talk about the individual stocks then in today's trade. IT as a sector dragged the markets, not just today but through the week. So stocks like Infosys, TCS, Wipro, they were all down. In fact, Infosys was down close to 6% for the week and dragged market quite a bit. Uh, apart from that, some other prominent nifty losers included a couple of oil and gas names, BPCL and ONGC. So the, so the uh, optimism is clearly coming down on BPCL and ONGC really has been one way down for that particular stock, 1.5% lower today as well. CIPLA was also down in trade. On the gaining side, one stock which really stands out tall is ITC. But for ITC, the Nifty would have been far below 8500 this week. For two days, that's the stock that took leadership position. Today also it was up 2%, DLF was up 5% and PNB was up 2.5%. Finally, to the mid-cap side, there were some reversals as you would expect on a day like this when advanced decline was negative. Prominent mid-cap losers included Suzlon down 5%, Idea down 4% and Sale where you had the OFS was down 3%. But there were some winners as well and some stunning moves again. JBF Industries up 19%, NCC up 13% and Opto Circuits up 10%. So that's the market for the day and the week. The theme of this week was mid-cap outperformance. The theme for next week could well be mid-cap underperformance, but that's something that we'll have to watch out for next week itself. Yes, uh, Anuj, you have been warning us of uh, that uh, mid-cap underperformance, uh, and there were some shades of it. Uh, you pointed out to Sue's Lawn. There were other places in the mid-cap uh, index where you could see a profit-taking. Ashok Leyland, after that huge rally, saw profit-taking today, as did Havels and uh, Berger Paints, even Texrail. Uh, you know, various sectors which have for various reasons risen and today gave up some of their gains as people took home profit before the weekend. Uh, uh, what also did well in the market today were actually the rate sensitives. The 10-year bond itself had come up for you. That actually rose higher and the yields fell towards 7.93. So a bunch of rate sensitives actually did well because of that. Uh, the bank nifty, I mean, it, it may have ended flat. But on a day when the index itself ended a third of a percent lower, the bank Nifty was actually an outperformer today. And within the banks itself, uh, uh, PNB uh, uh, stood out, as Anuj pointed out, as did some mid-cap banks like Central Bank and Union Bank. And speaking of rate sensitives, you must not forget that uh, real estate also had a good day today. The index did well, as did the biggie, DLF.
All right, uh, time now to get you some market opinion then. Ajay Srivastava of Dimensions Consulting feels that we may see some correction in the markets in the month of January and he expects the IT sector to underperform the market in the coming days. We look for a correction in the month of January. I think there is overly optimism on behalf of the government in the budget. I think market has kind of ignored the real economic fundamental dictating outperformance relative to the private banking sector may still continue in select stocks for the simple reason that the valuation gap has gone up enormously. These banks balance sheet are really in a bad shape and you know if the government is telling us so let's restructure the power asset, let's restructure the infrastructure assets, that is 60% of the portfolio. Now what do you want to do with a bank whose asset portfolio are 60 to 70% restructured? What are they doing in the market? Look at the quality of the people, processes, systems. You know, yeah, it's a good, I always maintain. PSU banks are a good trading opportunity, never a good investment opportunity. The emergency to excise increases in the oil sector which came into the last one month. That is telling you a stress story out there. Uh, one of the sectors which will underperform relative to the market is going to be the IT sector. That should underperform the market, so one would like to pay down the allocations to the IT sector. One would tend to increase the allocation to the large scale engineering sector at this point of time for the simple reason is that any revival has to start from there. We would like to increase the allocation to the cement sector definitely because that is where the allocation are going to value is going to come. Automobile will get a good share of the allocation. Okay, that's a bunch of sectoral advice from Ajay. Now, for all the action from the futures and options space, let's go across to Nigel D'Souza. Well, today we had quite a weak trading session with the Nifty ending at the low point of the day, ended down close around 25 points odd, and one got the impression that there was some lower level put buying. So the 8,400 put, we saw the premium move up by close to around 4 bucks. The 8,100 put as well, there seemed to be some protection buying at that particular level. The premium is only around 4 to 5 bucks approximately. The 8,600 call though, we did see the premium at around 67 bucks. Oh, there we saw some kind of writing that uh, that has emerged. And remember, that's a bit of a resistance for the Nifty because multiple times the Nifty has been selling off from around that 8,620 mark approximately. Now, the 8,800 call though, we saw some mixed activity. So there was some writing at that particular level. But there was some out of the money call buying as well. Traders taking a bit of a punt, going ahead and buying that particular strike for only around 12 bucks. But other buyers of the call options of around the 8,700 as well as the 9,000 uh, call, there was some unwinding uh, at those levels. Goes to show that in fact some of those out of the money call buyers, they're looking to unwind their positions and in fact take whatever they're getting at this point of time. Individual stocks though, that were fairly active. Ambuja Cements did see big buying in today's trade, as is the case with something like a DLF, both those two stocks fairly active. Big buying was seen on both those two counters. PNB as well was a standout performer, so that stock as well did see big, big buying in today's uh, trade. On the flip side though, a couple of stocks that have been running very, very hard, they came in for some unwinding pressure. So Siemens as well as Alabad Bank, we saw shedding on the open interest front, clearly indicating that there was unwinding of longs on that particular counter. And now Idea is a stock that has been correcting rapidly and in today's session as well, there was fresh selling in that counter. All right, before we let you go, Nigel, let's talk about the government's divestment drive. The 5% stake sale in uh, Steel Authority of India has been fully subscribed. So give us a breakdown. Well, that's right. Sales OFS was fully subscribed and, in fact, oversubscribed. The government of India was looking to sell close to around 5% stake at a price of around 83 rupees. It was at a discount of roughly around 2% to yesterday's closing price, though it did see a good amount of subscription in, and, in fact, the bidding prices came in higher than the base price. It came in higher than 83 rupees odd. Importantly, the government was looking to cut its stake down from around 80% to around 75%. Remember, in fact, the last time around, we did see the government of India cut their stake from around 85% to around 80%. And at that time itself, LIC emerged one of the biggest bidders because they took close to around 3% stake of that 5.8% approximately that the government uh, uh, offloaded. As things stands, the institutions hold roughly around 17%. That's the FIIs as well as the DIIs. That's pre-issue. So it'll be interesting to see post this issue what exactly that stake goes up to. Now, the valuation-wise, the stock's not very attractive. So brokerages, they weren't really impressed. Uh, McQuarrie, for one, they said the risk-reward ratio is unfavorable and they maintained uh, their sell underperform rating on the stock with a target price of around 63 bucks. They said that the expansion plan is coming at a very high cost and that's why they're not very positive on the stock. Meanwhile, Ambit, they recommended their investors to stay away from this particular issue because they have a sell on the stock with a target price of around 62 bucks. But as things stand, the sale OFS got oversubscribed. Thanks for that, Nigel.
Now on to a CNBC TV18 exclusive. Jindal Steel and Power is planning to raise up to $1 billion through a bond issue. That's what Prithika Saxena learnt and she joins us now with all the details. Prithika, tell us. Absolutely, Lata. One billion is the figure that they are looking at, and I understand that they are currently in the process to finalise this at the board level, and will then start appointing investment bankers for this. Uh, investment bankers haven't been appointed yet, but I do understand that the details will be charted out uh, possibly by uh, Jan beginning. Now, uh, what is the bond raising for? Remember, the company is sitting on a debt of thirty-five thousand crore rupees. Over and above that, aside from just bringing the debt down, they also need heavy capital for expanding their Ferris, that is the steel as well as the power sectors, which is, is it has been scheduled for expansion for quite some time, but there is has been always a capital overhang that they have been facing. Aside from that, there's a 3,000 crore penalty overhang that they are facing right now, and again, of course, uh, they are looking at bidding for the deallocated mines for which they will need capital. In terms of official comments, though, they have said that uh, they haven't appointed any investment bankers yet for the uh, one billion dollar bond issue. They do look at various instruments to raise capitals. However, they cannot comment. All right, Kritika, thanks for that. Uh, well, shifting focus to the banking space now, India's largest public sector bank, uh, State Bank of India, has cut interest rates on three retail term deposits below 1 crore rupees by 25 basis points, and this is with effect from the 8th of December. Now, SBI's move comes two days after private sector lenders, ICICI Bank and HDFC Bank, cut up to half a percent in maturities of up to one year. Speaking to CNBC TV18, VG Kannan, the managing director of SBI, said, that a lending rate cut will happen in due course of time. We are actually looking at uh, what will be the uh, benefits we'll uh, get from the uh, lowering of the rates. Uh, I rightly uh, think, you know, the rates, uh, the liquidity is quite uh, adequate in the system. And therefore, we felt that uh, paying a higher interest doesn't make sense. The inflation have also come, uh, started uh, showing a uh, decline. Uh, maybe we'll just uh, have to uh, wait and watch for a few months. And yes, uh, the base rate may be cut in, uh, in due course. Well, Mr. Kannan was later to tell us that he expects it in F515, uh, so perhaps uh, in three, four months from now. Time for a break now, but coming up, uh, more market perspective, and we will also get you some trading ideas.